Hey everybody, it's Guitar and Sense. I got some good news. I was able to get um, my virus to work with my iPad software. So I bought this device. It's a Yamaha UX16 MIDI to USB audio device. It was kind of expensive, but the Roland didn't work. The Roland I bought was broken. So uh, what I did is I, I uh, you just need a couple of things. Uh, this Yamaha USB to MIDI, <clears throat> I connect the uh, ends of it MIDI to my virus MIDI in and out. Then I connected the output, the USB part to a camera kit for the iPad. And then I, I, I now I can type like a keyboard. Is that cool or what? So then if I go to my oscillators and uh, here, this is, by the way, this is a really cool app. Uh, the um, only one I know of, I, iPad uh, touch for it. So you can choose your analog oscillator. So if I want a wavetable, so I can go here and here and filters. So if I want to do a low pass filter here, change the cutoff resonance. And I can go here if I want to pick a six pole. I can do a saturation. So here, this is so much easier than scrolling through the menus on the virus. Trust me on that. I want a wave shaper, get that. Filter link, we can change all this stuff, cut off link. Uh, then we can do parallel. So then you can change the balance too, like here, it's really cool. So then if I go into my modulation, this is where this really comes in handy. Sorry about the shading, but it comes in really handy because uh, such a pain in the ass to do this on the virus. Just trust me on that. And um, then you got your mod matrix. You can change all these things, right? So it's really cool. So if I want to change pulse width, I can do all that stuff. So it's kind of cool. And then you can go into your control. So right here, we're just using this expressively. So, you know, sensitive bass. So I can change all these things. I'm still learning this app. There's a lot to it. Um, the guy that wrote it is really smart. Um, I think he should go, Kemper should hire him. Uh, to rewrite their software and pay him uh, to do all that stuff. And you can change your arpeggiator pattern length. So if I want to do this, bop, bop, bop. I just got the connectivity to work. That's the main thing I was trying to figure out to get to work. And because I had it set up wrong before. And uh, <clears throat> I thought I'd try something different. So this is cool. So you can change your pattern links um, art mode. So if I want to go to... Uh, you can go here, you can change it. This is just so much easier than doing that within the virus menu because I did it last night in the mind and it was this. So you can change all that and then uh, I go into my effects. So I can pick like a uh, chorus off on or on. Um, I'm just, I just, I'm still learning this app because I just got the, I got it working. And the connectivity was the main thing. So here you have your course, advanced. Uh, you can pick, There's this is such a great synthesizer because you have so many types of effects. I mean, you got like, look at this, all this distortion, man. This is just awesome. I don't know too many synths that have this many choices on, on this kind of stuff. Um, so if I go here and I go, okay, I want a hard distortion. And uh, you can choose the LFO shape. So you can do LFO shape here. It's all touch base. This works really well. It's actually working now. It wasn't working before because I didn't have it hooked up right. You can change your LFO rate. See, this is so much easier. If you go into the virus menu, it's a real pain to deal with. And really, Axis should have not dropped the ball on this. I love the synthesizer. They got too focused on their stupid Kemper amp thing, <coughs> which is good, but I don't know. I think they should come out with it. They should have kept developing software for the virus because it's such a good synthesizer. Six pole crossfade. So this works really well. So they should hire this guy. Come on, Chris Kemper, hire this guy. He's really good. He could probably work for you and rewrite all your applications and, and, and do it really well. And probably work on your stupid Kemper amp model too. So, you, and you got all these different reverbs. Uh, this is like amazing. That sounds killer. 
And so like here, okay, so now if I go library, so you got your oscillators, right? So you got all your, you know, if I want to pick what type of oscillator I got, I can pick all these things. And I'm still learning my virus. You can pick like oscillator two, what do I want oscillator two? I can have it if I want to have it uh, granular. Like I said, this is one of the best things ever made. And and Kemper really needs to get off their ass and do something about it and not abandon it. It really it really is a travesty to abandon such a great synth, in my opinion. But you know, I guess they got their reasons. They don't tell why, but Germans are that way. I'm part German. It's a German mindset. So okay, so you got your this is awesome, it's working now. So you got all these different, man, this is great. I would go, I tried going through the menus last night, it drove me crazy. Man, this is so much better. So I guess what I'm trying to figure out now, if I go to multi, how to choose a patch. So I wonder how I would choose a patch. Uh, multi library, part 7 through 12. Um, there must be a way to do it. Okay, so that's an init patch. I wonder if I click on this. So you can do all this stuff, program change. Um, I just need to figure out how to load patches into this. Anyways, I just wanted to give you the good news. I actually got it to work. Um, I couldn't get it to work before. And, uh, oh, choose a file. So check this out. So there is a way to do it. I just need to figure it out. But I wanted to report back that I got it working. And it's nice to be able to control stuff from the iPad. So... Just to give, I'm not advertising for this guy, you know, or anything like that. I just know that if I like a product and it works, I definitely recommend it. So here you got your setup, different setup modes. Um, here it's seeing my USB MIDI device. Um, you can set up your parts, um, Omni mode. Um, I did set um, here, so this is this is the UX. This was expensive, it was like 150 bucks, but it works really good without a, Mistake I made as I was using this USB MIDI hub and it didn't work with it. So I'll probably see if I can keep this for something else. But if I go back here, let me show you what I what I what I what I have. So here, here in the virus, it's got this really cryptic system. So if you go to your mod matrix, you have to go to your edit, right? If you go edit here, then you go to LFOs, you know, you got your art matrix. Uh, if you go to the edit, you got your mod matrix, all this stuff. It's such a pain to menu dive through the screens on this. I love the synthesizer, but it's just the the um, whole system is very painful to, to work with. Because this synthesizer came out over like almost like 25 years ago, and they never really updated the interface. So you can still use it, but... It still sounds amazing, but it's just like really crude. It's like like when I was in college, we had computer screens like this like 25 years ago. But for a $3,000 synthesizer, like if you look at Waldorf, Waldorf is around the same price range and they have a color touchscreen. Come on, Kemper, you can do better than that. You need to like do what Waldorf is doing. Because my next synthesizer um, will probably be, I like this, I'm going to keep it. But my next synthesizer, if I get another Wavetable VA synthesizer, will probably be a Nord Lead or a Kemper. Not a Kemper, but um, probably be the Waldorf because it's got a color of touchscreen. I like that. Um, anyways, I, I think the, I, the iPad application is really good. It's really useful. Cheers.